Good morning and welcome to the morning homily at All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi. My name is Reverend Alfred Kaire. Our sign language interpreter is Rosalind Juguna. Brethren, our theme this week is based on Jesus, the promised King. And our main scripture reading for this week will be from Zechariah chapter 9, beginning to read at verse 9 and also John chapter 12, beginning to read at verse 12. Let us pray. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through the last. Amen. Our scripture reading today is Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. Brethren, you have probably had the experience that I have often heard where you are looking for something in the closet or in a room, but you couldn't find it because you had the wrong concept of what you are looking for. You thought that it was in a square black box, but it really was in a brown box. So you stared right at it and perhaps even moved it out of the way. But you missed it because your mental picture of it was wrong. Brethren, most Jews missed the king because they were expecting a different kind of savior. They thought that the Messiah would be a mighty political deliverer. They thought that the Messiah would be a mighty victorious person over Rome. They were not looking for a lowly savior riding on the fall of a donkey. They could not conceive of a suffering savior who offered himself as the cut sacrifice for sinners. And so, tragically, they missed the coming of their king. What am I trying to say? Many people, even now, miss the king because of wrong expectation. They are looking for a savior who will grant their every wish, but it hasn't happened. They want a savior who will instantly solve their deepest problems, but those problems have not gone away. Or they expect a church where everyone always loves one another, but a church member treated them wrongly, so they dropped out in bitter disappointment. Brethren, these are the wrong concepts I had when I was looking for what I could not see while it was there when I started. In order to joyously to welcome our king, we need to understand properly who he is. Our text is one of the messianic prophecies of the Old Testament. But the news that a king is coming is not necessarily a cause for great joy. No. If you remember the coming of Alexander the Great, who ruthlessly conquered Israel's neighbors, the news of his coming would have struck terror 
in the hearts of those in his path. He often slaughtered all the men in a city and sold the women and children into slavery. He was not concerned about the well-being of subjects, but only about his own power and dominion. Is this the king that we are expecting? Brethren, it is also difficult to accept the news of a coming king because there is a sense in which all of us want to rule our own lives. We can accept government interference to a limited degree as long as it does not get too close. But if a king started trying to control every aspect of our life, how do we, how we do business, how we relate to, we relate to each other, including our families and even how we speak and think, we resist the very thought of such a king. We certainly would not rejoice at the news of the coming of that kind of a king. Brethren, just a glimpse of the kingdom of this promised king. What should we expect? The king of justice. The primary reference in this context is to a king who administers justice in his kingdom. He is not corrupt, the king that is coming. Like so many world rulers, I read every now and then about leaders who are siphoning public money into personal and family bank accounts. Our king is not that type of a king. Much of the poverty and suffering around the globe stems from corrupt leaders who have no regard for justice. Brethren, that is not our loved king who is coming. But the promised king will be just in the administration of his kingdom because he is righteous in his person. He is righteous in his dealing. He is righteous in everything that he does. This is the king that is coming. The king that is coming, he is not out to take advantage of his subjects for personal gain. He has their best interest at his heart. Oh, glorious king, he is the one that is coming. The king that is coming is the king of salvation. He will fulfill the promise of salvation by ruling over all the nations. He will bring spiritual salvation by offering himself as the sacrifice to satisfy God's justice against sinners. If God dismissed our sin without the penalty being imposed, he would not just be, he would not be just. God has declared that the penalty for sin is death. Not only physical death, brethren, but also spiritual death. Eternal separation from the holy God. The king that is coming, brethren, is the king of salvation. The other point we note, the king that is coming is the king of humility. In contrast to the proud Alexander on his war horse, the promised king comes as a servant. As a servant to all. Not, on, not only on a donkey, but the fall of a donkey. In the Old Testament, 
kings and warriors rode horses, not donkeys. The donkey was a lowly animal used for peaceable purpose by those who are of no rank or position. By riding the fall of a donkey, the promised king showed himself to the king, to be the king in fulfillment of our text. But not the exalted political king that the people expected. But he who offers salvation and peace with, with God through his death. This is the king that is coming, brethren. Brethren, in summary, in the kingdom of the promised king, the king that we are eagerly awaiting for, there is justice. The king brings salvation by offering himself as the sacrifice to satisfy God's justice against sinners. The promised king brings salvation by offering himself and giving us the justice that we need. The promised king comes as a servant. And so, in that sense, his kingdom is universal. How I urge all of us listening to this homily this morning at All Saints Cathedral to join in this kingdom. And for those who are already enjoying the fruits of this kingdom, let us keep bearing the good fruits so that we can be rewarded by the promised king. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your everlasting, overflowing, and merciful love. Fill our hearts anew with the wind of your spirit, that we might shine like lights in the darkness, leading others to test and believe in the grace and legacy of your promised king. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.